Welcome aboard Motiot Stella Mar, an RJ115 model built by Cantier Del Marche and freshly launched in 2023. Excitingly, this is the first walkthrough video of Stella Mar to be published on YouTube. I had the opportunity to film on board this still hold Explore Yacht during the busy Cannes Yachting Festival. It's worth mentioning that potential buyers were touring the vessel during my visit and for privacy reasons I did not want to get them in any of my shots. So bear with me as I guide you through the accessible spaces on this magnificent Explore Yacht, showcasing these stunning features including of course the engine room and the bridge. Before we carry on, I'd really appreciate it if you take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really want to try and get to 50,000 subscribers by the time the year is finished. As you probably know, the more subscribers I get, the more boats I can get on. As you stroll down these generously proportioned side decks, you immediately notice the flawless craftsmanship on this boat. And when you enter the cockpit, it becomes evident how well equipped Stella Mar is for hosting the owner and their guests. When you enter the saloon, the yacht model is an excellent reference for her dimensions. And what really stood out to me when I was in the saloon is the abundance of natural light flooding through the enormous windows. While I was filming, the saloon was being toured by prospective buyers, so I couldn't capture every detail. However, this brief glimpse should give you an idea of how inviting and tranquil the space is. Up front, you'll find a formal dining area elegantly laid out for those special dinners on the high seas. At the rear of the saloon, there's a cosy lounging area, perfect for winding down with a good book or enjoying a nightcap. Moving out of the saloon and heading forward on the starboard side, we enter a lobby area with a staircase that allows us entry up to the bridge deck or down into the accommodation area. Let's head down into the guest accommodation area before we check out the master cabin that is located on the main deck. We arrive at the first twin single cabin located on the starboard side of the boat. One of the things that stood out to me again is the extraordinary amount of natural light that floods this space thanks to the expansive windows. For added convenience and of course privacy, this cabin also features its own ensuite, complete with high-end fixtures and finishes. For a twin single guest cabin, there is lots of space in this ensuite. Heading back out into the cabin, the two beds are elegantly designed and exceedingly comfortable, ensuring a restful night's sleep for guests. Nestled between the beds, you'll find a set of finely crafted drawers, perfect for stowing away your personal items. Moving across to the port side, we find the second twin single cabin, which mirrors the layout of its starboard counterpart. Once again, the large windows illuminate the space, highlighting the meticulous attention to detail that characterizes Stella Mar. Like the first cabin, this cabin also comes with its own ensuite, providing guests an intimate and comfortable space to relax and refresh. And I really love the size of the shower in here and check out the size of the rainhead fixture overhead. It's worth mentioning that Stella Mar can accommodate up to 10 guests in a total of five staterooms. But what do you think of the guest accommodation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Now we've finished having a look around the two twin single guest cabins. Let's check out the first of two double guest cabins. As we enter this warm and inviting space, no doubt your attention is immediately drawn to the inviting bed, tastefully adorned with high quality linens. What's truly striking here are the expansive windows, bathing the room in natural light and offering breathtaking views. Adding to the modern luxuries of this stateroom is a TV recessed into the bulkhead. Now let's venture into the ensuite. 
I love the large vanity mirror, which is perfectly positioned to make the space feel even more expansive. The real showstopper for me though, is the massive shower, featuring indirect LED lighting that sets a soothing ambience, adding yet another layer of opulence to this already exceptional living space. The second double cabin has the same layout and features as the first. And by the way, if you're thinking of setting off on your own nautical adventure, be sure to check out Circumnavigation and Ocean Passage Making, written by Ian McNeil, the owner of Motoyot Astra. If you'd like to grab a copy, head to the video description where you'll find a link and a discount code that will give you a whopping 40% off the recommended retail price. And now I've finished showing you around the second double guest cabin, I think it's time to head up onto the main deck and show you the breathtaking owner's cabin. The boat has a crew of five, but the crew accommodation was in use. So we're back up on the main deck now on the starboard side as we enter the owner's suite. First of all, you'll notice this work area, which is a great place to sit and catch up with your emails, thanks to that amazing view. Opposite the workspace, we have the entrance to the vast wardrobe space. This walk-in wardrobe has lots of space and is really well lit. There's more than enough space in here to keep all of your favourite clothes and shoes and hats and everything else you might need to take with you as you venture off over the horizon. Now let's head forward and I'll show you the vast full beam master suite. On the bulkhead facing the bed, we have a large flat screen TV recessed into the bulkhead. Over on the port side is a really comfortable lounging area, the perfect place to wake up and sit down with your morning coffee. But let me show you the owner's bathroom that has more of a spa feel than a bathroom on board a boat. Over on the starboard side here, we have a spacious infrared sauna. I've never used one of these infrared saunas, but if you have, let me know what it's like in the comments below. We have a toilet here that can be shut when it's in use, but check out the centerpiece, this huge bath. Once again, the quality and finish in here is exceptional. Opposite the bath, we have a large mirror with his and her sinks. Over on the port side of this vast bathroom is another toilet. Over on the port side of this huge bathroom, we'll find another toilet that again can be closed when it's in use. As someone who prefers having a shower as opposed to a bath, this is probably where I would spend most of my time in this big shower room that can also double up as a steam room. And check out the privacy glass that allows you to peer out as you're having a shower. One thing that obviously I can't show you or explain to you really is the smell in here. It feels like you're in a five star spa and I must admit as someone who likes going to my local spas on a regular basis, it feels like a home from home. A couple of other things to point out whilst I'm in here is the amount of headroom you get, it's exceptional and also the amount of storage space in here as well. You can just imagine laying in bed watching your favourite yacht tuber on that huge TV and you probably already noticed the vertical speakers on the bulkhead. You can just imagine immersing yourself in the audio and visual spectacle of this space as you relax with your favorite person. So now we've finished having a look around the guest accommodation and the master suite, let's go up and check out the bridge. I'm back on the main deck now in the lobby area adjacent to the stairs, checking out this fantastic feature, but let's head up onto the bridge deck. As well as the art feature, I also love this staircase and the use of the LED recess lighting. If we were to turn right here, we'd be in the Sky Lounge, but instead, let's hook a left and head up into the bridge. As you would expect on a brand new Explorer yacht, in here you will find all of the latest navigation and communication equipment needed for long distance voyaging. On the helm we have four multi-function displays which can be configured according to the preferences of the captain or the officer of the watch. Note also the controls for the bow and stern thruster and throttle control levers for the twin engines. Make sure you stay tuned for a tour of the engine room. Whereas most steel explorer style yachts have forward raking windows, the RJ115 have reverse rake windows instead but the angle of the windows is not too steep to allow too much glare 
on the displays and too much radiated heat onto the controls. As you can see from the current configuration, the CCTV is being displayed on the right hand monitor. Something I'd be interested to know is what do you prefer? Do you prefer the bridge on boats or do you prefer the engine rooms? Share your thoughts in the comments. Behind the helm position is a control panel that includes displaying information for the various bilge alarms on board the boat. And of course you know that you're on a long range explorer yacht when you have this much stowage for all of the courtesy flags. And check out the engineering on the pilot's house door that leads out onto the deck. There's also another door on the port side as well. And I just love this seating arrangement on the foredeck. After the bridge is this spacious sky lounge with a comfortable seating area and a huge TV flanked on either side by bookcases which are nicely lit thanks to the indirect lighting. And check out the size of the windows in this sky lounge. I can imagine how easy it will be to feel intimately connected to the surrounding seascape when you are relaxing in here. And when you open up these huge doors then the interior is seamlessly connected to the exterior spaces. On the port side we have a staircase that leads down onto the main deck. There's also a conveniently located serving area that is right next to the main dining table. As shown here this area can be used as an outside exercise space to burn off those pesky calories picked up during your time on board. Let's use the starboard side deck now to venture forward and look closer at the seating area on the foredeck. For those of you who are interested, the yacht subtype of this vessel is Displacement Expedition Yacht. Her interior and exterior design is by Francesco Pazowski and the naval architect is Hydrotech. As you walk along the wide starboard side deck, you'll notice the helm station under cover on the starboard side adjacent to the life buoy. There's also one on the port side as well. Note also the four life rafts stowed away up here. This really is a great place to sit and relax with your guests with comfortable seating for at least 10 people up here. And if like me, you try to avoid spending too much time in the sun, then the area can be shaded off as and when needed. The forecastle area on this explore yacht is on a recessed part of the foredeck, which is quite handy for when the crew need to gain access to the anchor gear without disturbing the owner and their guests. If I had more time, then of course I'd show you inside some of the spaces, including the anchor locker, but obviously it's a busy yacht show, so time is a bit of a premium. And when was the last time you saw bulwarks this thick on a boat of this size? I'm going to take you along the port side deck, but as you'll see in a minute, there's a staircase that leads down onto the main deck, so I won't be able to walk all the way around. But stay tuned because in a minute I'm going to take you up onto the sun deck and I'm sure you will be just as impressed with this space as I was when I first saw it. Next we come to the vast sun deck which is one of my favourite areas on board the RJ115. Over on the port side is a U-shaped serving area with a bar that's got three chairs so you can sit and enjoy a drink whilst taking in the view. Opposite the serving area is an L-shaped seating area. There are also some sun lounges placed on the aft section of this area so you can just sit back and relax. And if you're wondering what this device is over on the starboard side at deck level, then it's one of the boat's EPIRBs. And remember, if you need to update any of your navigation or safety equipment on board your boat, then be sure to check out my nautical stores on Amazon. You'll find the relevant links in the video description. If you are a fan of barbecues, as the owner of this fantastic boat clearly is, then there's a huge barbecue located over here on the port side. As we venture forward, you'll get a glimpse of a seating area, again an L-shaped one on the port side, and look at that jacuzzi. Again, there's more seating over on the starboard side as well. I love the layout up here, and in particular the fact that on the port and starboard side of the jacuzzi, you've got some additional sun pads. This entire area, in my opinion, is perfect for enjoying some time with your family and friends as you sit and enjoy some food, have a drink or three at the bar, relax in the shade, enjoy the jacuzzi or just bask in the sun. This sun deck really does have it all.
But now it's time to venture down below and check out the engine room. As we venture now towards the engine room, we pass through this ship's laundry area where there are two washing machines and two dryers. It is also where some of the boat's water toys are stowed and this part of the boat opens up for quick and easy access out onto the large beach club area. On the port side of this space we have a large freezer so you will not run out of fresh foods during your voyage. When I upload these yacht tours onto my YouTube channel I always notice how the amount of freezer and refrigeration space on board a boat is something that my subscribers can get quite passionate about. Powering this 35 meter or 114 feet and 10 inch vessel are twin Caterpillar diesel engines, each producing a remarkable 715 horsepower. It's this muscle that propels Stella Mar to a top speed of 13.5 knots. For those of you who prefer a more leisurely pace, she cruises comfortably at 12 knots. And here's the magic number that I know many of you are waiting for, a staggering cruising range of 5,500 nautical miles. To put it into perspective, that's enough to cross the Atlantic and then some, all of course while maintaining an aura of luxury and reliability. With a beam measuring 7.5 meters or about 24 feet and 7 inches, she offers an abundance of space both above and below deck. Her draft for those of you who are interested is a manageable 2.3 meters or 7 feet and 7 inches, allowing for considerable versatility in shallower waters. Despite her spaciousness and the numerous amenities on board, Stella Mars gross tonnage is an efficient 299 gross tons. This Italian engineering marvel doesn't just look good, she performs exceptionally, balancing speed, range and of course stability. As I show you around the rest of the engine room, let's talk a little bit more about the Caterpillar engines on board. What we've got here are inline six cylinder diesel engines, each delivering a solid 715 horsepower at 2600 RPM. Now for a still explorer yachts like Stella Mar, that kind of power is crucial. We're talking about a vessel that's designed to carry heavy loads and make long voyages. It needs an engine that can handle that without breaking a sweat. Of course, reliability is key when you're out in remote waters, far away from any immediate help. Trust me, the last thing you want is engine trouble when you're halfway across the Atlantic or exploring secluded coves. That's where the durability of the Caterpillar engines really shines. These are workhorses built to withstand the harsh marine environment and keep running smoothly for years. The engines on board also strike a beautiful balance between power and efficiency, and in today's world, where we're all a little bit more conscious about our carbon footprint, it's good to know these engines have low emissions. That means you can enjoy your journey without worrying too much about your environmental impact. And if you ever find yourself needing technical support, remember you're backed by a global network of dealers. Wherever you are in the world, help is just usually a phone call away. But what do you think of the engine room and the surrounding spaces? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to say a massive thank you to CDM for allowing me to film on board this beautiful boat. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to get in contact with me. You can find me on Instagram and you can find my contact details in the video description. If you are interested in getting into yacht broking, then I have some exciting news for you. I've teamed up with David Seal, a yachting industry veteran with nearly 30 years of experience to bring you the Yacht Broker Masterclass. This course is a game changer. It's perfect for transforming your personal life and professional career. Are you a successful real estate agent looking for a new challenge? Maybe you're passionate about yachts and want to turn it into a career. 
David's course is specifically designed to provide you with the skills, network and confidence you need to succeed in this unique and rewarding industry. And guess what? If you use my special discount code, YachtBoy, you get an exclusive 10% off. Don't miss out. Click on the link in the video description to enroll and elevate your career. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to those of you who have become members of my channel. I really do appreciate the support. If you'd like to become a member or you'd like to find out more about channel membership, then click on the link in the video description. And by the way, if you're wondering where the boat's tender goes, then I'll be sharing a video with my channel members in the next day or two explaining all.